<laughs> it's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. One of the things we're trying to do in changing our format from devotional, the emotional devotion, is to recognize that when you wake up in the morning or when you look at a devotional, when you want to be inspired, when you want to grab a hold of something that you need to ingest, you know, so that you can digest your day and make it an investment in something more than just simply, I'm existing and I like being a Christian. Um, and that there's more to life than, uh, Sunday's coming, Wednesday was just passed, and, you know, we might even pray in between. But rather there's a, a vibrancy to your Christianity. There's a experience to your relationship that you, in fact, know Jesus. And you could say, Lord, I know you, you know me, we know each other, right? That I And that in some way, somehow, whichever way you have it, you're progressing. Oh no, progressive Christianity. Don't call me a progressive, call me a conservative. But you're progressing in your relationship with Jesus that you expect that the day will come when he will reveal to you himself. That he'll sit down and have a cup of coffee. Clean the house first. <laughs> Be ready. Because it's not a question of being ready to just run away and escape in the rapture, though that may happen. But it's also a question of every day you may meet the Lord. For know ye not that you might entertain angels unawares? Know ye not that you might entertain the Lord Jesus? Don't you know that inasmuch as you've done it to the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me? I'd go out and find somebody I could bless just so I can bless the Lord. Gee, what a novel idea. Bless someone. Touch someone. Experience Jesus in them so they could bless you and you could bless them. You know, maybe this Christianity isn't such a bad thing after all. Maybe it's not a dead religion. Maybe it's a live relationship. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we believe to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of so much of our life, the issues of life come forth. Because the scripture tells us that. And so we trust in the Lord with all our heart, leaning on to our own understanding. Because every time that we think we understand more about God, we find out we know less because we are created by him, not he is a creation of us. Because we do that, trusting him with all our heart, not leaning in our own understanding, we acknowledge him in everything we do. Matter of fact, one of the things we like to say is, hey, you know what? If you're having a morning constitutional in the bathroom, that's a good time to pray. Please, Lord. Never mind what you're praying. <laughs> we know. But the point being is that God is with you and sees you always in all ways. So don't try to hide it. Be real with it. Acknowledge that Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He shall direct your path. Because he does. You may not do what he says to do, but he he didn't promise to do it. He said he does direct your path. He shall direct your path. Now I can give you a little hint. You know, I can direct this guy's life by just sticking him right here and have him stand there and look normal. Or I could, you know, just kind of stick him on his head and he doesn't have a choice or a word otherwise to make one comment. But the reality is, is that the same thing can happen to you because God could literally start 
boxing you in so that you don't have too many places to look. Except up, rescue me, please. 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 And so God will direct you. Personally, I'd rather get directions from him and go the way he chooses than to be boxed in and have directions made for me. Yikes. In that case, I think we might want to figure out what the instructions are for the day. You never know. God might have something to say. The missionary master. You call me master and lord, and you say, well, for so I am. To have a master and to be mastered is not the same thing. Uh-oh. Must be one of those. I think we call this my utmost. You know why we call it my utmost? You guessed. It's going to take your utmost to get it. <laughs> and you're going to get it good. To have a master means that there is one who knows me better than I know myself. One who is closer than a friend. One who fathoms the remotest abyss of my heart and satisfies it. One who has brought me into the secure sense that he has met and solved every perplexity and every problem of my mind. In other words, all the things that I could think of, which, believe me, in my early days as a Christian, I thought of every possible, convoluted, contradictory, constitutionally incorrect thing that I could find in the scripture and ask God about. You didn't have faith to believe? Brother, you should have believed from the beginning. You should have just said, I believe. No. As a matter of fact, when I got saved, I said, God, I want to know, what is this? This doesn't work. I'm not doing it. No, not to. You tell me what it is, why it is, and how come it's this. But you see, I went alone, sometimes into a parking lot in the middle of the night, mad at God. God, you said you were going to do this, and you didn't do this, and I thought you were going to do this, and then it went like this, and I didn't understand this, and I don't know why this is happening, and that didn't happen that way, but you said it was going to go this way, and I went that way, and I don't get it. Tell me now, or forget it. I just don't get this Christian life. You know what he did? Thou pissed me off. No, he didn't. He just listened. <laughs> he probably laughed. There's this little guy. Hey, Angel, come here. Check it out. Angels. Hey, go over here. Quick, quick. Look. Look at that guy in that parking lot. Watch this. He's going to get so wound up, he's going to be yelling and screaming and stomping around, and nobody can see him. And there he is. He's going, Wee! like a little guinea pig. Right in that little cage, so to speak. He can't figure out, I'm God. He's not. Check it out. Watch him. He's getting tired. Oh, there he goes. He started falling down on his face and crying. Yeah, I guess we should comfort him. Whoosh. And God always did. Because God wants you to question. God expects you to ask him. God demands, literally, that you involve yourself in a relationship with him so you know what the answer is. You don't put some faith and go... Oh, I have to have some mystical kind of revelationary experience that I don't understand it, and I have to be blind faith, and I have to be without sight faith, and I have to just kind of go along feeling my way and experiencing maybe I'm heading the right direction. And... Well, that's my face. I thought it was God. No, Jesus just made it a lot easier than that. He opened the door so you could see, hear, touch, feel, and know God, eventually. But in some ways, even now, by His Holy Spirit, if you have seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. So if Jesus is alive, 
he could appear any time. Hey, Paul, Paul, come here. Did Jesus appear to you on the road? And he could bring you up into heaven and talk to you. Hey, Paul, check that one out. You went to heaven? Oh, so did John. And they never went back. Ooh, there's more to life than what I can see. Uh-oh. Then the reality is, you can see, touch, hear, and feel God. Not in just some Sunday morning way. Not in just some Sunday night way. Not in just some, oh, we got the concert, we got the concert, we got the ooby doobies, goobies, we got the hair-raising experience, because we got the bass cranked up. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, you can have that same feeling of intimacy, that same joy of quietness, presence of God Almighty, without all the instruments, without all the people, without all the hype. Because God wants you to. Because Jesus said, I pray they may be one as you and I, Father, are one. So you see, there's a lot more to Christianity than sucking your thumb, to being content with just, I'm on a Sunday morning fast. I only see God on Sunday morning. Frankly, you should see God every day. One who fathoms the remotest abyss of my heart and satisfies it, the one who has brought me into the secure sense that he has met and solved every perplexity and every problem of my mind, who has met me where I am at. To have a master is this and nothing less. One is your master, even Jesus Christ. Our Lord never enforces obedience. He does not take the means to make me do what he wants. But he will get your way. <laughs> At certain times, I wish God would master me and make me do the thing, but he will not. In other moves, I wish he would leave me alone, but he does not. <laughs> People tell me they can't hear God. Check it out. I can't get him to shut up. <laughs> I wish he would, Lord, you know. God, you talk too much. <laughs> but if you're not hearing from God, hmm. Let me let me figure this one out. I don't see God, I don't hear God, and I don't talk about God. Is that I hear no evil, I see no evil, and I speak no evil? Or is that I hear no God, I see no God, and I speak no God? Ooh. Monkey see, monkey do. I think the monkey is you. <laughs> oh, 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 me. Because <laughs> of reality, God is talking all the time. When isn't God talking? Come on. Pick up a Bible. <laughs> I mean, get a grip. Get a book. Get real. And today, listen. God doesn't quit talking. God is always talking. I just can't get him to shut up. At certain times, I wish God would master me and make me do the thing, but he will not. In other moods, I wish he would leave me alone, but he does not. You call me master and lord, but is he? You see, the key issue of your life isn't your salvation. It's who's master. Have you been mastered? Or are you just kind of like that colt that just got born? Bucking and kicking and stomping and dancing and running around happy with the joy of life because you've just been born again? Or are you ready for the bridle? Are you ready for the saddle? Are you ready to be broke so you can be ridden? Because you are your brother's keeper and you have someone to carry. Did you know that? 
Master and Lord have little place in our vocabulary. We prefer the words Savior, Sanctifier, Healer, Propitiation, all the things that involve an action he's already done, not something he's doing today with you and me. The only word to describe mastership and experience is love. We know very little about love as God reveals it. This is proved by the way we use the word obey. In the Bible, obedience is based on the relationship of equals, that of a son with his father. Our Lord was not God's servant. He was his son. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience. If our idea is that we are being mastered, it is a proof that we have no master. If that is our attitude to Jesus, we are far away from the relationship he wants. He wants us in the relationship in which he is easily master without consciously knowledge of it, for we all know that we are his to obey. In other words, when you love someone, when you love someone, they don't have to ask you. You do for them what you love to see them happy about, what you love to see them blessed by, what you know brings them great joy, what you feel when you've done something that brings the light in their eyes to look at you full of the glory of the Lord. And that you know and you see as it were a physical thing that you cannot see come out and reach out to you and it touches your inner spirit and it binds you to that person in love and you know that's God's love that's greater because you can't see it that's deeper because you feel something more than the passion and the puppy love or the involvement you have with your wife or your husband but when it's your husband or your wife that you have brought the love of God to, and you see in their eyes Jesus loving you, and added to that is their love. Oh. Is that not holiness? Is that not completeness? Isn't that what you want to do? God says yes. Because he says, I am the Father. I love you. I created you. I gave you my prophets. I gave you my teachers. I gave you what you wanted even. And lastly, I gave you my son. Oh, don't you know that I am loved? I love you. Be child and grow up in the love that you would be full of who I am that we together would love as my son loves me and I love him as you are being loved by me and I if I could see you and being loved by you because the spirit of God such a powerful, creative way, is able to go beyond the technology, be oh so hovering in creation to bind us together in love. That can only be separated when you step out of love with God. You want to learn how to be a Christian? You want to know how to know God? You want to walk each day with Jesus? Then take one thing and make it your focal point of your life. Make it the absolute obsession and be possessed by it. Fall in love with Jesus. Yeah. You, man. You, woman. You, child. Fall in love with Jesus over everything else. 
God will open up the heavens and reveal the Father's love for you in a way you would never imagine possible. Because the Spirit of God will become alive in you, filling you, flowing through you, and overwhelming you to one day you just fly away in the arms of love enveloped by the God of love who brings you home. Trust in Him. Trust in your Lord with all your heart. Be not your own understanding. Get out of your concepts and all your ways of knowledge Him. And let Him, allow Him, give Him the freedom to direct your path. Because He'll take you straight to Himself. Have you ever told someone this? I've never said it or meant it. Try it with me right now. Try it thinking about God. And look someone in the eye and say, I love you. And you'll never be the same.